everyone, it's Dr. Brooks. Good evening. I wanted to post a video going along this whole dietary interventions for autism. So I had already done a video. I want you to go back and watch that first so you have a basis for what we're gonna talk about right now. So I did a video after reading the new recommendations for the American Association of Pediatrics and gluten and casein-free diets in kids with autism. Let's just say I don't agree with it. So please go watch that, then come back to me, okay? There was um, Dr. Peter uh, Neiman published an article called uh, Dietary Interventions for Autism, December 21st of 2019, so just a couple weeks ago. And I, the, the, it's a great article. We're going to tag it down here so you can read it. He talks about the incidence of autism. We already know, one in every 59. You know what I say? I think it's much lower, but it is what it is. Um, there's all these things, whether dietary interventions help kids on the spectrum. I really don't understand why we're still having this conversation. It's beneficial, it helps, period. There's a ton of research, let it go and go with it. Um, for me, if anything can help, then we should do it, right? The percentage by which it helps isn't always the same, but like I said in the last video, 70% of my parents have a noticeable difference. I have to break the news to kids all the time that they have food allergies that they never knew they had, which I had to sit down with a nine-year-old today. Very difficult conversation to have, but when all of a sudden, there's a big list of things you can't eat, right? Um, and that's a tough conversation to have. I think if we were paying a little bit more attention, medically speaking, when they're younger, we wouldn't have to have these difficult conversations when they're older. Um, they were, so what happened was, in pediatrics, they published this article in November that basically said, we're going to take a look and we're going to look at a bunch of a meta-analysis, which basically means they're going to look at a bunch of different studies and then they're going to form an opinion on it based on that. Now, they looked at um, 27 clinical trials, about 1,000 patients with ASD, autism spectrum disorders. The average age of the kid was seven. The duration for the diet was only 10 weeks. Here's what's difficult. There is no, this is such a difficult thing to do a clinical trial on because we don't know if they're actually following the diet. In a 10 weeks to base your decision on only a 10 week trial is not enough um, in my opinion. So statistically speaking, they concluded that um, it's, it's really a small statistic that should not be convincing enough that the diets help. We, uh, hopefully you know that complementary and alternative medicine work, diet, nutrition, um, if you're thinking about it, really stop thinking and just do it. This is, this is not, this should not even be something we negotiate on, guys. This is a big deal. I'm not saying that diet changes are, are easy, but I'm saying that they are controllable. If, if it's something I can control, it's something I can teach, it's something I can educate a family about, then great. Here's a million things I can't control. So if I can control this and I can help, then we need to do it. Um, we know a lot of things that have come out in complementary medicine that we don't do anymore, right? We don't do chelation anymore because we know so much more about the pathways and how they work and how to help and how to look and how to how to help those pathways along and there's things that we don't have to do anymore that we used to do 10 and 15 years ago and i'm thankful that we don't do because they can be harmful as well um when we're talking about statistics we can, statistically this statistically that again if it helps we should do it period if you're not going to do any harm by changing a diet you know, every kid should be on a multivitamin, even if they're on a gluten and casein-free diet. Do you think my four-year-olds are eating a perfectly balanced meal? I just had this whole conversation with a mom today of a four-year-old, and she said, well, I feed him whatever he wants because that's what he's eating. And I'm telling her that this is not the right thing to do. We can't go backwards. Every time we go forward, we're taking two steps back. And treatment is not going to be beneficial. The supplements that we take and things, the diet is important because the diet is like the soil, right? and then I'm dumping supplements in to help the plant grow. If I'm dumping it into a fire, guys, we're wasting time and we're wasting money. So we need to be, the role of a diet intervention should not be frowned upon. It shouldn't even be questioned. It should be something we all do. Now, is it forever? That depends on the kid, right? Um, and I'm not gonna go into all of that because it's a waste of time. 
but it's not always forever. However, I will tell you, bad news, huh, caveat, I have not had a kid in my entire career that could go back to both gluten and casein in their complete, you know, list, everything, I should say. There's always something there that they shouldn't be having. Um, something that he wrote about in here is we need to accept the fact that there is no one size fits all treatment for kids on the autism spectrum. And anybody that's telling you that is lying to you or, or they've convinced themselves of something that isn't true or they don't have enough experience because it doesn't work like that. It's not a check sheet, not a worksheet that I say, do this, 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 and this, and then we have a neurotypical child. It doesn't work like that. These kids, all of them are so different. All of them benefit greatly from some of the same things, right? While others need other things. And that's why functional medicine is important. And that's why you need to find somebody that's going to dive into your child, figure out what's going on with them. That's what I do in my job all day, every day, and I love it, right? So if it's something you're thinking about, if you've tried the diet and you're like, it doesn't work, I'll tell you why it doesn't work. Even if you're doing it right, because you can't change a diet and not give digestive support. You can't change a diet and expect it to give you these magical results that you're reading about unless you're doing all the digestive work at the same time. You get the most bang for your buck, guys. You can't do things half, right? Doing the diet is a part of the puzzle of getting things better. Again, it's part of the puzzle. It's not the whole thing. So, you know, could we get better design clinical trials for dietary interventions? Yeah, but you know what? That's gonna stay super, super difficult to do by nature, right? The doctors and researchers might be ignorant. They might, in, in this fact that they're not educating the parents on what to eat, we have to be skeptical about compliance. We have a lot of miseducation about how to read labels, what's allowed, what's not. So until you know for a fact, like you can put a thousand children in a facility where someone's feeding them this and you know exactly that it's gluten and casein free, I don't see how you can conclude that it doesn't help but they're also concluding that it's fine. Like, go ahead and do it if you want, but don't expect any results. I'm calling bluff, guys, not possible. Diet's too important. And you know, if you don't believe it, start reading our testimonies on our website or our Facebook page because people talk about diet all the time. I wish it wasn't that important. I wish that you could be like, let your kid go into the pantry and go crazy, but it just doesn't work that way. Consistency in eating is important. Supplementing is important. You have to do them at the same time. You don't get where you need to go without the whole thing working. So don't get discouraged if you've done a gluten and casein free diet and it hasn't yielded these amazing results that you read about, okay? It's because there's a bigger part of that puzzle that you haven't looked at, right? That's what I look at. I look at urine, I look at stool, I look at blood, I look at hair. What are all the things that are adding to it? I always think that kids that come into my practice, it's always a perfect storm. It's not like one thing, we solve it, wah, magic. You know, this is not a Z-pack in five days we're all okay. This is, we gotta learn, we gotta get educated about your kid. We gotta know what's going on. We gotta know how to peel back the layers and get to the core issue, right? That's what we spend six months doing, sometimes a year, it just depends on the kiddo. But I promise you that you are not wasting your time by doing a diet. And I promise you that what you're reading in here, I need you to like, and be like, no. Because it does help, it is helpful. It is life changing to make diet changes. You gotta have the right guidance. You gotta have the right support, okay? Diet's not gonna do it alone, um, but it's huge. It's huge, huge, huge. So wanted to get on and kind of do a cleanup from this original thing. And I'm doing it, you guys, because if I'm seeing this and all this stuff's coming out, you're gonna see it if you haven't already. And I wanna talk about it because it's super important. And I'm super upset that we're still seeing this stuff online. But uh, Dr. Neiman did a great article. It's, he made some really funny points in here. Um, and I'm appreciative that he did it. Uh, he's a pediatrician actually. So the fact that the pediatrician's writing this is is really kind of funny, but I love it. I love it. I love that people are speaking out and saying, you guys are being ignorant and you're incorrect. I love it, love it, love it. So anyway, there's that. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. Y'all have a good one. Bye.